My guest recently had a five-hour encounter with Jesus. It will change your entire understanding of Christianity. Next. Now, my guest, Kevin Gladeyes, he's been a guest a number of times, uh, but I have to tell you, I, I love talking about in 92, 1992, he went minding his own business, a dentist, and he died in the dentist chair. But he went to heaven, and he came back with a supernatural sign to kind of prove to the skeptics he really went to heaven. He plays 14 musical instruments. He played zero when he went to heaven. Fourteen! It would take a lifetime for someone to know how to play 14 musical instruments. I guess you're the most shocked that you're able to. Yeah, it's proved to me all the time, Sid. In fact, I'm working on my 15th now. Well, you heard a voice, and God said that His voice is heard in the secret place. Everyone wants to hear God's voice. What is the secret place to you? Well, I saw that the secret place is actually in the throne room of God, and it's next to where the cherubim are. There's a cherubim, um, there's a cherub on each side of God and covers him with wings, and it, they're huge. And it's just like the mercy seat in the Old Testament when he built uh, the Ark of the Covenant. And if you get right there in the shadow of the Most High where those wings are, then you, that's your dwelling place. And there, there's no hindrance, there's no disease, there's no other voices except God's voice. That's the secret place. And we have been given access through Jesus Christ. We can sit with Him in the heavenly realm. But I, I can tell you that we have all been bought that place through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I bought this place for you. This spot in heaven is for you. And He said, you can come here anytime you want and sit with me and you can hear God's voice and take it back with you. He said, you can know my will and bring it back to the earth. That's what we're supposed to do in prayer. Is go uh, can, can we literally feel when we go to the secret place what you felt when you died and went to heaven? Without a doubt. See, I was in the same spot, Sid, and when this happened to me, I was taken to that place, and I realized that we were all supposed to know this place. This was supposed to be our home. And this is where we're supposed to abide. There is no devil, there's no devil in hell that can come into that place. And that's why we need to be there so we can hear God's voice. It's very clear there. Uh, when you, when I hear secret place, I heard what you said, but when I hear secret place, I think it's the area I go to pray. But you say that's just the start. <laughs> well, you know, Honestly, Sid, we're seated with Him in the heavenly realms according to Ephesians 2, 6 and also in Colossians chapter 3. And I'm telling you the truth, that's where we're supposed to pray from. We're supposed to pray from heaven to the earth. We're supposed to bring back with us what's there and make the kingdom of God that is in heaven make it on the earth. We're to yank it here violently. That's what I do in prayer. I demand, I demand that the kingdom of God come on the earth as it is in heaven. And that's prayer to me. Prayer to me is, is transformation, which means I transfer from the other realm to this realm. I see my prayers answered because I already see it in heaven. It's mine. And that is true faith. It's the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. This is easy. This, a three-year-old, you can teach a three-year-old to believe this. That's our problem. We're not yeah. three. Yeah, but we need to be. We need to become like children again. The, the, the way the earth is right now, the world system, it's very complicated. We were not made that way. We we're not made to be in a broken world. So you have to remember that. We're a fallen and we've been redeemed in our spirit, but we need to get our soul and our body in line with our spirit. What does God's voice sound like? A loving Father. And it's very reassuring. He's standing on our future. According to Psalms 139.5, He is standing on our future and He's paved a way to it. So He's bidding us to come to our future, which is His now. <laughs> Just readjust our thinking and be transformed because the, the soul needs to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, by the Word of God. That is what 
Paul told us in Romans chapter 12. So that's what we need to do. Then we need to tell our body, like he told the Corinthians, he said, I discipline my body daily so that after I preach Christ that I myself am not a castaway. In other words, your body could rule you and your mind could rule you, but your spirit, your spirit is supposed to rule you. We are born again, we're new creatures, and that's where God speaks to us, in the spirit, in our spirit. That's where he speaks, he's spirit. He speaks spirit to spirit. That's, that's the key. There are so many voices right now out there, but there's only one that we need to hear, and that's the commander of our faith. That's our Father. That is the Holy Spirit who has been sent. All three of those are talking to us because they are in us. The God inside of us, this is the hope of glory. And every Christian needs to get this way. We've only got a short amount of time before we're gonna be tested again, and we need to hear God's voice. Now, you and your wife, I see you pray in tongues for hours and hours and hours. Why do you? Because I saw in heaven, praying in the Spirit connects us with the books of destiny that's in heaven because the Spirit of God is taking hold of us and helping us to intercede on behalf of the perfect will of God for our life. There are books in heaven, Sid, and God sees those books because He wrote them, and the angels are told to enforce those books in our life. And I agree with it every day. Sid, I, I recommend that everyone agree with their books and pray in the Spirit because that's what we're doing. We're, we're opening the pages of our books, and the Spirit is proclaiming what God has already ordained. I, I just can't wait for you to hear about Kevin's five-hour visitation. It just happened recently with Jesus. It will change you. It'll change you forever. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Call now and get Kevin Zadai's revelatory four-part audio diary, My Time with Jesus Concerning Your Future, and his must-read book, You Can Hear God's Voice. It's exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9703. Kevin Zadai recently experienced a five and one half hour encounter with Jesus, where Jesus revealed to him the future concerning how the body of Messiah needs to navigate these last of the last days. Kevin recorded his revelatory four-part audio diary, My Time with Jesus Concerning Your Future, so you can hear what Heaven is saying to you and what is happening now and in the future. On Kevin Zadai's revelatory four-part audio diary, you will hear the following. Jesus told Kevin, Me and my father are not causing the worldwide corona pandemic, protests, rioting, and global economic shaking. It is coming from the demonic realm. Jesus revealed to Kevin a great deception has come upon the earth that is going to result in a great exposure of false believers, ministers, and ministries. Believers are to seek to receive the meat of the Word. Believers are to no longer walk in the mental understanding of things, but instead we must operate with revelation from God. God is going to give the body of Messiah a supernatural advantage in business, in investments, and they will prosper while darkness comes upon the earth. God's angels are going to be assigned to people houses. Home Bible studies and spiritual gifts will flourish. God is sending resurrection power even in these end times. There is a short time you have to get ready for what's coming next. You will also receive Kevin Zadai's must-read book, You Can Hear God's Voice. This book contains supernatural keys to walking in fellowship with your Heavenly Father. Through this book, you will learn to recognize God's voice apart from other voices, encounter new clarity in knowing God's will, access your many rights and privileges as a believer, walk in increased discernment through Holy Spirit power, experience transformation by renewing your mind. As you walk and talk with God, you'll find yourself living the abundant life of blessing that you were meant to live. I believe that God chose Kevin because he felt he could trust him to really communicate what God wants to do for the last day's church. Don't miss out on getting Kevin Zadai's revelatory four-part audio diary, My Time with Jesus Concerning Your Future, and his must-read book, You Can Hear God's Voice. It's exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9703. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222. To Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9703 or log on to sidroth.org. 
call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Kevin, I saw you looking out, and what were you looking at? During the break. Well, I saw, I saw that, that the world as we know it, it's going to change and get darker, but then I saw that it's going to break forth with great light. I saw that next year that there was going to be a breaking forth and that this, this broadcast and this network was a great part of, of transferring from the heavenly realms the message that Jesus has for this hour, and that is just to look up for your redemption is drawing nigh, and He's preparing His bride. That's what's happening right now, and it's a, it's a message of hope. And God has not left us. He is with us in a mighty way. And He's given us tools right, down, right now, down here on this earth, to bring His kingdom and bring justice in this, in this realm down here. Speaking of tools, yeah. why did you send me the four CDs of your recent five-hour visitation? Why did you send it to me? Well, first of all, when it happened, I, I thought there's just too much content on here to put everything on. But the Lord asked me to document as much as I could remember at one time. So I did the four CD set. And then after I was finished, he said, now send it to Sid. And he said, um, I want the world to know what is about to happen and how we can be the five wise virgins and get ready for what's about to happen and actually allow the Father to be glorified through this. And you know, I have to tell you, one of my favorite books in the Bible is the book of Ephesians. And Jesus Himself was your teacher on the book of Ephesians? Yes, He gave me the plan that He had for man, and then He gave me the plan He has for the body and the church. And He said that the church shall, shall not experience uh, the overthrow of the gates of hell. In other words, they won't overcome, the, Satan cannot overcome the church. So He said, in this preparation time, learn what you just saw, what you just it happened here on the earth, learn from it and get ready because it's coming again, and this time it's not a test. This time the five wise virgins will be ready. He said, focus on that. And then he went through and taught me about the church and about the body and about the fivefold ministry and told me what we're supposed to be doing right now, how we're supposed to be building each other up in unity, and how the prophets are supposed to be prophesying from the fire, and the apostles are supposed to be fathers who are birthing us and getting us ready in maturity. He said to go from milk to meat. That's what Jesus wants. And this is what Paul talked about. He wants us to be on meat, not milk. And he also said this. He said, I'm done with lukewarmness, Kevin. Jesus said this. He looked at me with fire in his eyes. He said, I'm done with lukewarmness. He said, he said, you need to be faithful and lift me up. He said, I want you to defend me and my father to the world because we're not doing these terrible things that are happening on the earth right now. So you're saying, uh, there are a lot of people saying that it's judgment. They only say it with glee on, on humans from God. What did God tell you? God told me that the fivefold ministry is supposed to be speaking to the body and building them up so that they're in unity and that they can be effective witnesses because there's this huge harvest coming in. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So it wasn't, he said to me, he said, the earth, the world, the world is already being judged. Those who have rejected God, they're being judged right now. He said, but the people of God are not being judged if they judge themselves. So he asked me to bring forth this message and give you these CDs so that we would judge our ourselves that we wouldn't be judged with the world. That's what's happening right now. He said the separation has already started. Uh, you say that we should defend God, defend the Father to the people because He's being given credit for what the devil is doing. Yeah. They, they, they got the devil and God mixed up. Yeah, and Jesus referred to them as being slandered by, by the enemy, by the devil. And He said, we'd have nothing to do with any of this. He said, this is because the God of this world is evil and He, he is creating a, a, a false view of a good God who loves people. He said, Kevin, me and my father love people. We would never do these things. We want everyone to come to heaven. That's what He told me. And He gave me hope. He told me to take this message to the world. And so that's why I contacted you. Well, tell me 
Uh, one of the things that intrigued me is the Lord told you there would be a big separation in the church, and it would be involving the supernatural. Yes, he saw, I saw that the religious goats would separate from the lambs, the sheep, that it would be those who resisted the supernatural resurrection power of Jesus Christ, and that it would be so evident that people would separate and the goats would dig in and say, no, we're not having this. And then that there would be a smaller remnant that would accept the power of God and go on with God. And those would be the ones who display the miracles and the signs and wonders and were a habitation place for the glory of the Father that was coming on the earth and is already here. And one of the things mm -hmm. you were shown was something that someone prophesied over me, that people would have visitations of Jesus and be totally changed. Yes, overnight. As soon as they go to bed, Jesus said uh, that because it's so busy and people are in fear right now, He said, even my people are in fear. He said, I'm going to visit them at night and I'm going to convince them otherwise that I'm a good God. I'm going to show them their future. I'm going to give them plans. And then I'm going to have angelic assistance come. This is all going to be at night when their mind is not busy. And He said that when they wake up, they'll be a new person. He said it's going to happen all over. He said He's going to start is, is with this families. Gonna be not just spiritually, but even physically? I'm curious. Oh, no. I mean, I'll just tell you this because it's a bold statement, but Jesus said, if I have to extend people's lives out to 120 years just to fulfill what I've spoken, I'll do it. He can do whatever He wants with those who adhere to His sayings. And so Jesus, through, um, through John, He said in the first chapter of John, verse 12, He said that those who embraced Him and heard His sayings, He gave them the power to become sons of God. And that's what we're coming into right now. We're coming into those days where those who hear the voice of the Lord will obey. And that if we passionately love Him, what does it say? He will come and live with us. And He, can, he will give us whatever we ask for in prayer. Whatever we ask, if we passionately love Him and obey Him. This is what, uh, what John recorded in chapter 14. And then in John 15, it says, we're in the vine, and He is in us, and that we can ask what we will, what we desire, and He will do for us. These days are coming where believers will have more happening at night with the Lord than during the day. During the day, they will be out ministering to people, and miracle, miracles are going to start to happen. Said, these are just common believers. This is not apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. That Jesus said, I'm, I want the believers to walk in this, not just the fivefold. Well, what's going to happen with these thousand plus member churches that maybe even the pastor is spirit filled, but he's learned to demote tongues and things of the supernatural to the back room. His elders have, yeah. have uh, told him he has to do that to get his paycheck. Uh, what's going to happen with those mega churches? Jesus said that the Spirit's going to be whispering to the people and they're going to hear his voice and they're going to know. They're going to know the true voice of God, and they're going to migrate out of that, out of those places, and they're going to go where the Spirit of the Lord is allowed to move, where salvations are allowed, where healings are allowed, where deliverance is allowed, and where God is portrayed as a good God who has provided for us everything we need for life and godliness in this life, and that's through Jesus Christ. Jesus is going to be lifted up, but there'll be a migration out. The sheep will know that they, there's a religious spirit involved, and they will leave. Now, you said that you were told there is a short season to get ready uh, for what is coming. What is coming? Yes, this shocked me. Jesus said that everyone has to have oil in their lamps and be ready and learn from what you just went through, because he said that the enemy is going to try to reroute everything that's going to happen in the fall that has to do with this country and it, it, the elections. It's almost like the devil has a plan yeah. and God has a plan. Yeah. And it's a matter of whether the people that are appointed by God to speak out loud kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, do their job, or get off caught up with the spirit of fear 
and do the devil's job. That's what I hear him saying. Yes, but he said it was a war on righteousness. There's a war against righteousness and justice. And that is what's really going on here. It has to do with rebellion and witchcraft. It's on the surface, you think it's this party or that party or this president or that president, it, but it really has to do with righteousness, ruling and reigning. This, this is the demonic fighting back because they know they're about to lose their stronghold. This is what's happening right now. That's why Jesus said, you got to tell the believers, this is their time to shine. They need to not be silent. And this is what he told me. He said, tell the people, vote in heaven and vote at the polls. Why is it so important to... Now, what you mean by vote in heaven is speak heaven's message out loud, not the devil's message. Yeah, he said, use your binding and loosing powers, because whatever you bind, Kevin, is bound. He said, go to the root of the evil in this country and in this world. He said, cut it off at the root. He said, and those, those devils will not be able to, to use those people any longer. He, we can actually go to the root and watch people not be able to, they'll lose their power of influence. The evil will not have its power that it's had before. Oh, well, I, I believe they're going to pray, but if they pray, if they vote, uh, there still will be a bit of supply side crunch like we had in yes. coronavirus where uh, toilet paper you couldn't buy, but this will be even food or, or, or water. So what did God tell you to do? He said there'll be a shortage problem again. So he asked me to just to, to have enough supplies to share with others. So we, we've done that already and we're ready. And and he asked he asked me to ask the, the people, the believers to to be ready to have enough to, to help others and be a witness and tell tell people that God our Father is a good God, He's not doing these things, and then give them their sustenance and, and, and tell them that Jesus Christ is the answer and the way, and just witness to people through this time. It'll, it'll last through Christmas. And, and, but you're telling me during this season that believers are going to prosper. Yes. He explained, you know, there's a word in, in the Old Testament, it's a place called Goshen, and it was an area outside of where uh, the, the King Pharaoh was. It was a little area where the Israelites, there were slaves, you know, and they had their own place. But if you notice that during the plagues that were sent, that it only touched Egypt proper in the down in the in middle there, but out in Goshen, none of those plagues came. They had bright sunshine and everything was fine. They had none of the plagues happen to them. The Lord said that He called it Project Goshen is in effect, and He said from now on the believers will not participate in this if they fill their lamps up, if they're wise and they hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, and and stop being lukewarm. He told me to tell people to repent, Sid. Believers, he told me to, to, to tell everyone, believers as well as people in the world, repent and turn back to God. And he said, I will hear their, them from heaven and I will answer them. But Goshen is a place where it's actually the, what we think of as a secret place where nothing evil can touch us. Kevin, you, you have too much to share. Yeah. In the extended version of this show, Kevin will speak in detail about the next virus from China that's far worse. Unless, now to see the extended show, go to www.sidroth.org slash Kevin, K-E-V-I-N, www.sidroth.org slash Kevin.